Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to model a knife handle from Kitchen Knife using SharkFX um, and the new uh, Mesh Subdivisional and uh, Sub-D to NURBS tools. Uh, this is a job that normally using traditional methods would uh, take quite a while so that you could ensure that you had uh, uh, tangency and coach continuity. So fire up the program. Snap off the new uh, mesh tools palette and we're going to use mesh block um, just to define the volume of our knife. And uh, let's just drag that out. Um, I'm a bit smaller. So let's say 200 by 35 wide by uh, let's say 55 high. And what I'm then going to do is use the um, add loop tool to uh, add some loops to uh, give us some positions to modify our block. So I'll start off with add loop and we'll pop one on here, another in here, one here, one here, and then we'll have uh, another couple down here and one to finish at the end. So we'll then start using combination of the uh, Select Deep tool and the Gripper to modify the shape. So we'll select this face first and scale that down and move it up slightly. And what we can do is select this face, pull it down, select this one, move it up slightly. Grab this one, pull this one quite a way down, and uh, look at it. So at this point, you're thinking, well, that looks nothing like uh, the handle of a kitchen knife. So what we're going to do is turn that uh, faceted uh, mesh into a uh, sub D mesh. So we just click on the object, click on it again to make it a bit smoother, and I think we'll have one more click. To smooth it down yet further. So we've got what's starting to shape up to look a bit like uh, the handle of a kitchen knife. So um, even though we've uh, turned it into a sub D now, um, we can still carry on uh, modifying. So we can pull this down a bit. Um, I think what I'll do as well is uh, rotate that to give us more of an angle there. Um, maybe push this one back up a bit. And likewise here, push this up a bit, and we can have a look. See what that looks like side on. So maybe we're uh, sort of happy with that. So at this point, um, with any sort of mesh or sub D modeler, um, you could take this file out um, as an STL, have it rapid prototyped, and the same is true with SharkFX. You could uh, export this now as an STL file and uh, knock it out on your um, 3D printer. Uh, but what we actually want is we want a model that's suitable for production. So we want to turn this uh, this mesh sub D model into uh, a NURBS model um, that's watertight with good curvature continuity and tangency. So to do that, we're going to use the um, sub D to NURB tool. And we're just going to check one of the options, which is make associative. And what this allows us to do is go back and edit the underlying sub D object even after we've created the NURBS. Uh, model. Um, there are a couple of systems out there that allow you to do this type of functionality where you're converting a mesh into an herbs object, but most of them do it when you write the file out to a CAD format like IGIS or STEP or uh, SAT. In Shark, what's different is we're doing it inside the system, so we can carry on making changes. Um, we can use um, the powerful set of uh, solid and surface tools we have for NURBS modeling. Um, as well as the underlying subdivisional object. So um, we're just going to click on this and you can see it's doing the mesh to NURB conversion. And we can then grab hold of that part and drag that across here so we can uh, have a look at it. So to make things a bit less confusing, I'm just going to change the color and we'll make that uh, blue. And we can then carry on using the same tools um, that we were using before on the underlying uh, mesh. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this uh, top 
facet here, and I'm just going to scale that um, add a little. So if we look at that from above, that has the effect of uh, making our uh, handle a little, little bit thicker. And likewise, we may want to make it um, slightly thinner here, so we can now use the scale tool, this time we're scaling down, and you can see that's a, a nice effect of uh, pinching that for us. Um, and again, we'll just move this up a tiny bit. So let's say at this point we were happy with the shape we got. Um, let's bring in a, um, a blade. So what I did earlier was I uh, found a model on GrabCAD um, and uh, imported that into SharpFX using the new uh, SolidWorks reader. Uh, I had to do it on the Windows side of things because uh, the SolidWorks reader doesn't exist on the Macintosh version. Um, but you can do exactly what I just did, which is... Uh, you know, load the Windows version of SharkFX onto um, either Parallels or, uh, in my case, uh, VMware Fusion um, to allow you to uh, bring the file in, save it in the SharkFX format on the desktop on the Mac side of things, and then you can literally just drag and drop it straight into your model. So again, we're going to uh, oops, use the Select tool and use the gripper again to move this into position, so we'll look at that from above. Um, again, you could um, spend a lot of time uh, locating this, but for the sake of the movie, I just want to generate um, something that's uh, roughly in the right position. So, pull that back a bit. So let's say we're happy, well, no, let's pull it back a bit further. Let's say we're happy with the uh, location of the blade there. Um, we can then do uh, our normal, um, you know, surface solid type functionality. So we can use um, the booleans. So what I'm going to do is, uh, from this, subtract this. And if I hold down the Option key, I can hang on to my design component, which is a knife blade. And what we'll see if we just very briefly um, make this transparent uh, we can then select that, hide it and you can see we've done perform the boolean there uh, so let's show all so what we can also do is we can uh, now in uh, Shark 9 apply booleans with um, edge treatments um, so let's just turn this transparency off here um, so what that means is I could, for example, take a cylinder and I'll just draw that in space. And again, whoops, use our gripper to move that into position. And let's move it back a bit up a bit, like that, and uh, that looks uh, a bit on the large side, so I'm just going to make that slightly smaller, let's say 15 mil in diameter, okay, and we're going to do boolean just like before, uh, but this time we're going to look in the options and change, so we have uh, an edge treatment, so we're going to put uh, a rad on there, um, let's make that uh, 3 mil. Click on OK. So solid to subtract from. What are we subtracting? This one. And you can see now it's applied a 3 mil rad on there as an edge treatment. Uh, but looking at this now, um, it looks like it's uh, the, the, the handle's a bit on the short side. So what we're going to do is, again, use Select Deep. And uh, I'm just going to pull this handle out a bit. And let's rotate it around. Actually, no, let's not do that. Let's put it back where it was. And as well, I think I'm going to go and grab the end face here and let's just pull that out. So let's say we're happy with that. Um, 
what we're just going to do now is just have a look at the uh, the continuity um, of the, uh, the the NURBS object we've got here. And to do that, we're just going to very very quickly change the resolution to super fine. So it's displayed well, um, and we'll just select the part and go into the verify, and we'll use a zebra um, plot on there, and uh, let's use a thick horizontal. And what you can see as we move that around, you've got very, very nice um, continuity on the rear of that. Um, in fact, um, all over the uh, the object, um, which would make this a great part for uh, exporting out for tool making purposes. So there you go, a, uh, a quick uh, kitchen knife handle using the new subdivisional tools in. ShockFX version 9. Thanks very much. Bye.